Good morning and welcome to Cindy's Kitchen. An exciting Saturday here in Cindy's Kitchen because today is National Oreo Cookie Day. Always a good day. Uh, so welcome. Cindy's Kitchen is a cooking community. I know that there's so many cooking videos out there that are quick, quick, quick. That is not this. We sit around and chitty chat, we talk, we get to know each other, we share ideas, and we share recipes. If that's for you, stick around. Make sure you say hello, introduce yourself, and tell us where you're from. If you're watching the replay, don't forget, hashtag replay. And we're so glad to have all of you in our community, our little cooking community. So let's start with our hellos. Good morning, Julie from Northwest Houston. Good to see you. Debbie, good to see you. Oreos do sound good, don't they? Good morning. Diane's on. Good to see you. I got an itchy nose. Does that mean someone's thinking of me? Itchy nose. Someone must be thinking of me. I don't know, good or bad. <laughs> so, all is good and right here in Houston today. Sun is shining. Ah, oh, Diane, good morning from West Michigan. Good to see you. Yes, it is sunshiny here in Houston, uh, and so that is an awesome thing. The dogs are running around like crazy in the background. You know how my house is. It's a crazy thing. Hey, Debbie, uh, Jessica, Debbie says good morning. Not to Cindy, but to Jessica. <laughs> good morning, Brenda. Good to see you. Donna's watching. Good to see you. It's sunny in Chicagoland. Good to know that. So... I know that, um, oh, Sue's on, Sierra, Beverly's on. Good morning, Lydia. Good to see you. Um, I have to show you, I know that you're very surprised when I say I got some, I got some new Polish pottery. <laughs> good morning, Alice and Becky and Terry. Hey, Beverly, good to see you. And Susan's on. I know that um, it will really shock you. Um, that I have new Polish pottery. <laughs> uh, Terry's here. Sierra, good morning. Uh, Joan from Sandwich, Illinois. But hey, Alice. Um, Alice, good. Look, look at that. Good morning, Janet. This is a this is an eleven ounce bubble mug, and so good morning, Sue. It is going to be a great day. Isn't that gorgeous? I think it's really really pretty. Now, normally I would not buy this mug. Look at the little, isn't that cute, the little ladybug? Hey, Gail from sunny Chicago land. Esther, good morning. Yes, the gas explosion was, near, was nearby. Hello, Karen. Donna's in Montgomery. Okay. I know, isn't that pretty? I normally would not buy this cup because it's an 11-ounce bubble mug. And you know me, I'm the big 16-ouncer. And so I was a little leery about buying this. But it was so pretty. That little ladybug just made it for me. So, I bought the mug. So, there you go. Hey, Blanca. I know. It is so pretty. And it just makes you happy. So, I had to have it. There you go. <laughs> like I'm trying to justify my Polish pottery purchase. All right. Well, let's get started, shall we? So, what are we cooking in Cindy's Kitchen today? Well, today is National Oreo Cookie Day. National. Ooh, let me get them. National Oreo Cookie Day. So, you know, I had to make something with Oreo cookies. So I'm taking one of my older recipes that is one of my favorites, um, and I'm adding the Oreo cookies. This recipe is not for the faint of heart. I'm telling you. This is like sugar, 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 sugar. Oh my goodness, we're gonna die. That being said, the original recipe calls to make this in a nine by 13 dish. Um, I'm gonna divide it up and make some for my daughter to take home and some for us. And that'll make me feel a little bit better. I know, Lydia, you're shocked. Shocked, I say, that I bought more Polish pottery. So let us get started. Raise your mugs. Raise your coffee cups, your hot tea mugs, your iced tea, your lemon water, whatever it is you're drinking, and let us cheer. Coffee clinks to everyone. Mmm, mm, mm, mm. Okay, many of you Remember a recipe that I did called a brookie. Did anybody ever make the brookie? Now the brookie, if you remember, has a chocolate chip cookie on the bottom and brownie on the top. And that's what made it. I, oh, and it has cream cheese and powdered sugar in the middle, right? 
and that's what made it a brookie because it has brownie on the top and cookie on the bottom brookie salve hugo good to see you um hey kathleen kathy from illinois good to see you so i'm and and i have a theme today it didn't match my mug but that's okay I have a whole lot of dishes in this pattern, and it's called Bluebell, because you see the little bluebells? Um, and there's a kind of a matchy pattern I use with it. Um, so you're gonna see a whole lot of the Bluebell pattern today. Now, normally, this recipe goes in a nine by 13, and if you saw me make it last time, it's a big nine by 13. But because it's so much sugar, I'm dividing it up, and so I have this one, which is a 10 by 10, three inches deep, and I have this one, which is a seven by seven, three inches deep. It does need to be a, a kind of a deep dish because we're gonna have a layer of chocolate chip cookie, we're gonna have a layer of cream cheese and powdered sugar, a layer of Oreos, and then a layer of brownie. And then, because if that weren't enough, we're gonna do a layer of milk chocolate frosting. Oh my, I know, right? That's why I said, this might be a good dish to share with someone. All right, so to get started, again, I have my two. I'm gonna tilt you down just a bit so you can see the dishes and I may pull you back. You have a bob in Bluebell. And oh, you have the big old bowl. Well, cool. All right, so, oh, Kim Sharp is watching. Kim, good to see you. I'm gonna give both of these uh, pans just a quick spray with the cooking spray. And then I have a tube of cookie dough. Whatever kind of chocolate chip cookie dough you use, um, do you use uh, a name brand or the store version? It doesn't really matter, right? I'm just gonna slice down the middle so I can get it open. And then there we go, look at that, yummy cookie dough. How many, thank you, I'm just down the street in case you're looking for someone to share. Well, Kim, come on over. Uh, Kim and I uh, used to be in homemade gourmet together. Doesn't sound like anything you would like. Ha <laughs> Gail, right? So since I'm dividing this, um, I'm gonna put about, um, I don't know, maybe a third of this in the bottom of the small one and then the rest of it in the bottom of the big one. Um, so my hands are gonna get a little icky and you know how I feel about icky hands. So what I'm probably gonna do is, watch this, I know. Right? Kind of gross. But now I have a little oil on my hands and then it doesn't stick as bad. Good morning, Jenny and Mary. Good to see you. All right, so here's my smaller dish uh, that I've sprayed and I put a third of the cookie dough. You know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna spray a little bit more and put it on the outside of my hands. I tend to push things down with my knuckles instead of using my hands. I don't know why, but I do. I tend to use my knuckles. Good morning, Katrina. Good to see you. All right, so we're just spreading the cookie dough into the bottom of our dish. I'm gonna steal a little bit more. Again, the dish that I'm sharing with my daughter is a seven by seven. The dish for us is a 10 by 10. Uh, you, you, if you're just making this for yourself, would do it in a nine by 13. <clears throat> okay, so there you go. Cookie dough pressed in the bottom of hers, and now I will press it in the bottom of ours. So again, I put um, about a third of it in hers, and I've got two thirds in ours. So, good morning, Katrina. I hope you're doing well. Oh, there's my Texas daughter, Larissa, on. I have ended up, I know that you will find this humorous, but I've ended up adopting several people. And so, I have several people that I call my daughter or my son, um, only because I've kind of like adopted them. And it's funny, I used to do chaperoning when our church would send our senior high kids on, um, on trips. And we would go to South Padre Island every year. They didn't, go, they didn't go last year, but my daughter's graduated anyway. Anyhow, and so I would be one of the chaperones. Good morning, Polish Pottery. I loved your snails that you showed. I just couldn't be on because I was prepping for today. Uh, you guys don't forget, um, I don't work for more Polish pottery. I don't, I mean, you know, they don't sponsor me by any stretch of the imagination, but Rebecca and I have been friends long before she ever started importing Polish pottery from, um, from Poland. 
and she got me hooked. And so I do, um, I trust her. I know that she only brings uh, the good Polish pottery in. And, and so I trust that she is really good about only bringing in from factories um, that don't crackle, that don't break. And so I am loyal to my friend Rebecca and I only get my Polish pottery from her. So if you're interested, um, it is morepolishpottery.com or allpolishthings.com. Uh, the best thing is just to download the app on your phone and then she's got a live, I think tonight at six. Rebecca, maybe you could um, put down um, the, the website and uh, so, so they know what to download. All right, so here is our 10 by 10, again in the bluebell pattern, and we've just smashed our, our cookie dough down into there. If you don't believe that factories are different, I will say that at one point I bought um, a, a baking dish that from a, a factory that's not one of the ones that Rebecca carries, and it was a pretty dish, which is why I bought it, but already where the white is on it, it's crackled. Like it's got cracklies, like it's old. So there's a reason for all this. All right, so again, my two blue bells were the smaller one and the big one, and we have our cookie dough set down in there. Now the next thing we have to do is do our cream cheese. All right, so I just have eight ounces of cream cheese in here. Now you might ask, I, Polish pottery does a couple of things for me. It makes me happy. And you know, in the last year, we've had some not so happy days, right? Um, but the Polish pottery makes me sing, and so there you go. Hello, Michelle. Now to our eight ounces of cream cheese, we're gonna need a half a cup of powdered sugar. I told you this is not a good for you recipe, right? Not a good for you recipe. But a, oh my goodness, it's a great recipe. All right, we're gonna mix this up. I suppose I could do it by hand, but you know, old arthritis fingers isn't. We may see if I can get powdered sugar flying throughout the entire house. Wouldn't that be fun? So many of you know, you're lucky, you're only 10 minutes from War Polish Pottery. Donna, I am so jealous. Most of you know, well, not most of you, but a lot of you know, yesterday I got my second COVID shot. I got the Pfizer one. And I always like when people ask which one you got, like there's a choice. I mean, you just, you show up where you can get it and you get what you get, right? <clears throat> okay, there we go. Let me get this off of here. I like to turn it up really high and spray it throughout the kitchen. Okay, there we go. Most of it is off of there. Mm. All right. So there is our powdered cheese and cream cheese. Powdered cheese, powdered sugar and cream cheese. Anyway, so the first shot I got, um, right arm, Pfizer, uh, the shot didn't hurt at all. Like, I don't know if the girl was that good or the, the shot was not whatever. I did have a sore arm for a couple of days, but other than that, nothing else. Yesterday, I got the second one and it hurt going in. Like, ow, kind of like if you've had your shingles vaccines, that hurts going in. Um, so it stung going in and then it stung a little bit afterwards. Um, okay, so we're gonna spread this. Um, I'm gonna put a third of it over there in the, in the small one and then we're gonna use the rest in the big one. So I got it at 8.30 in the morning and I was concerned because my husband, Dr. Pee Pee, uh, got we're just gonna spread this cream cheese powdered sugar mix on top of the um, chocolate chip cookie dough. Um, when he got, he got the Pfizer, same thing. Um, and when he got it, about 12 hours after he got the vaccine, he got really bad chills. You got the Moderna and the second one hurt going into, yeah. Um, so he told me that it, that it was the shot because um, I already had some antibodies from the first and so that's why it hurt, who knows. Anyway, but he got really bad chills. Like the whole bed was shaking and, and was freezing to death. And um, I put like three blankets on him and, and was rubbing him, you know, trying to make him warm. Um, gave him some Advil and it lasted, I don't know, maybe six, six eight hours and then he was okay. 
And then there was nothing else. Um, he didn't have a fever or anything like that. I, okay, there's the first one. I had a headache. Happy Saturday, Laurie. Good, Laurie, good to see you. Hi, Paula. Good morning. Glad you're watching. Um, I got a really bad headache. And I have headaches all the time, so, you know, that's not saying a whole lot. Um, but my normal headaches are back here, and this one was up here. So it was a different headache. I had two headaches. <laughs> um, but that was really it. Um, I didn't have an easy night. Philip was working nights in the ICU. And so that means it's just me, the dogs, and the cat in the bed. And um, except the cat was outside. And at 3 o'clock this morning, I hear, meow, meow. She wanted in the house. And the dog that woke the dogs up. So I had to get up and get the cat in the house and let the dogs go out and pee pee. So there you go. All right, so cream cheese and powdered sugar on top of our chocolate chip cookie dough. That's done. You know I want to lick this, don't it? Don't you? Um, you don't know if I did or not, right? <laughs> I had to order some more of these. I get these from Rebecca too. I love these because just throw them in the washing machine. There you go. All right, so now we're going to use National Oreo Day. So we have to put... Heather's watching. Good to see you, Heather. Anyhow, so all is right in the world. I now have my COVID, both COVID vaccines, and life is good. All right, so what do we do with the cookies? We're just going to lay the cookies. Can you see? I'll tilt it up. We're just going to put the cookies in the bottom of the dish on top of our cream cheese and powdered sugar. Oh, you think this looks good? Lydia, just wait. It more happens. More happens. All right. So there we go. So I'm just going to, it won't be exactly even, but look. All right. So that's what I've got in that one. And then in my big one, obviously, we'll need more Oreos than that, right? Because it's a bigger dish. So we're just going to layer our Oreos. Now, if you were looking for another way, you get your second shot on the 15th. Okay. Well, good. If you um, want to do this dish in a little different way, you could do this um, in a uh, muffin tin, right? And you could you could either do it just like a muffin or you could put the papers in because the Oreos are right about the right size for your muffin pan, right? Did you know that? Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Let me see if I can... I want more Oreos because really, can you have too many Oreos, right? So I'm gonna shove, oh, I broke one. I broke one. Does that mean you have to eat the one you break? I don't know. All right, so these won't be as pretty a shape, but there will be more Oreos to eat. Because really, it's not, is anyone else frozen? Oh, are we frozen? Let's see, anybody else having issues? Now I think, could you smash the Oreos first? Of course you could, Debbie. Look, you could, you could smash them all up. You could break them to make them fit. You know what, Cindy's Kitchen is all about doing whatever makes you happy. You guys, Debbie actually made the asparagus quiche. And um, here's my thing that made my heart happy. Okay, there's our Oreos, okay? So now I'm gonna set this aside. Bye-bye, Oreos. The rest of you go in a big milk. Um, now we need a big bowl again. And I'm not even going to wash this. I'm just going to use it again. Hello. Good morning. Okay. Now the bra on the brookie, right? The bra on the cookie, and that's the brownie mix. If you're using a brownie mix that says 8 by 8 you're going to need to use two. This, oh, it froze for about five seconds. Okay. All right. This is for a 9 by 13 which is why I'm using this big one, okay? Now, into our, uh, where's my scissors? Oh, there they go. I'm using the same bowl that I did the cream cheese and, uh, cream cheese and powdered sugar in. It's fine, really. I mean, I could have gone and washed it, but I shan't. Now, you just follow the instructions. I we have the eggs for what it calls for, for this, for whatever particular brownie mix that you need. Now, this brownie mix calls for a half a cup of oil, so I'm using that, 
The other thing that it calls for is three tablespoons of water, but I can't leave well enough alone. So instead of three cups of water, I'm using three cups of coffee. I mean, not cups, I'm sorry, tablespoons. It calls for three tablespoons of water. I'm using three tablespoons of coffee. It's just the coffee that was in the pot from this morning. So there you go. You can use water. I always think that when you put coffee, I always used to put uh, instant coffee crystals in my brownie mix. It also calls for two eggs. Um, so I, um, I always put coffee because I think that the coffee brings out the, the chocolate flavor even more. Although in this recipe, do we need more? Well, I don't know, but there you go. All right, I'm gonna use my Danish batter whisk on this one. The, I mean, the mixer's right there and I suppose I could use it, but um, I shan't, so there you go. All right, so now we're just gonna mix up the brownie mix. And again, any box you got. Okay, so I got, um, does anybody watch, it's on, it's on YouTube. Uh, but it's one of my favorite things to watch, and usually it's once a week. Does anybody watch Alton, um, Alton Brown on, um, on YouTube? It's called QQ Quarantine, I think. And he and his wife started it when um, we were all on lockdown. And I love them. They're such a cute couple. And Alton Brown has been one of my favorites from the beginning because I always liked that he um, explained everything the science and the background and the history. And to me, that that just made it. It wasn't just cooking. All right, I know this still has cream cheese on it, but again, I don't really care. All right, I'm gonna start with the smaller one. Oof. So there we go. Corinne, good to see you. All right, and so I'm gonna put about a third of this, oh, yummy brownie mix on top of the Oreos. So now, what do we have? We have a layer of chocolate chip cookie dough. We have a layer of cream cheese and powdered sugar that have been mixed together. Then we have a layer of Oreo cookies. If you don't want them whole, if you want them all crushed up, that's fine, you could do that too. It was more work, so I didn't do it. I loved his old show too. He is fabulous. He has a new show, but it's on Discovery Plus. And I don't have cable anymore, so I, I can't watch that. Um, but like I said, I love that he and his wife uh, do this thing, and they have this pug called Scabbers. Is that it? Scabbers, I think? Um, anyway, she's a cute little pug. They have a lot of fun. And you know me, it's all about fun, isn't it? I'm going to put just a little bit more so that this is covered up. All right, so there we go. You see how? See how? All right, now I'm going to do the big one. I preheated the oven to 350 degrees. I also saw that Alton Brown is going to be going and doing like some live concerts. How cool would that? You saw him at the convention center. Oh, wow. Um, and so that's kind of cool. I, I think that, and I like, here's why I'm telling you this. Because he and his wife sit around and talk. Very similar to what we do, right? Talk about things going on in their family, things they saw at the grocery store. Oh, they made a mess. Um, when they don't have what they need, uh, or they make a mess, or they spill stuff, it's real. And, and it's kind of like the way do we think, do things here. The other reason I like it is because, you know, I've had several comments, not so much on our Facebook group, because you guys have been around a long time and you know, but when we put these on YouTube, is we have a YouTube channel and we post them on YouTube. And, and quite frequently, we get comments um, that um, there's too much talking. And, 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 and not, it's not like nice, like sometimes they say too much talking, but sometimes people aren't very kind and they go, you know, stop talking so much and just cook. I'm like, well, okay then. And so I try to be nice and explain that this is not just a cooking video, it is in fact a cooking community and I want us to cook. All right, so there we go, all spread out. Oh my goodness. It's like, except it won't be pretty if I don't scrape that off. There we go. All right, this is what we should look. I know every layer is yummy. Mm. Go ahead, complain that I lit. Where's the what thing? Oh, here it is. 
All right, so this is going in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. And then we'll do some more magic. Now, we need lunch. Big skillet, big skillet. I'm gonna put a little oil in my big skillet, maybe two or three tablespoons. It's okay that you're late, Joanne. And then I'm gonna heat this up, all right? So we're letting the, the oil get hot. It is my kitchen, right? Oh, thank you, Alice. Uh, anyway, so what are we gonna put in there? We are gonna make cheesesteak sandwiches today. I don't, I'm not calling them Philly cheesesteaks. Because you know, when you call something um, a name that everybody knows, especially if somebody is from Philadelphia, they get offended if it's not exactly right. So I didn't want to call it Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, but it's very similar. So we're just going to call them cheesesteak sandwiches. Um, I've got about a half of an onion. You can more or less. Um, the bad thing I'll have to tell you, this is just leftover onion. We had hamburgers last night. And see, these were the sliced onions left over from last night. All right. So about a half an onion or a whole onion, depending on what you like. This is a, and, and uh, this is a yellow bell pepper sliced up, and this is a red bell pepper. Look, blue bell, and I picked these other ones because they kind of match, look at that. That one kind of matches, and that one kind of matches. Cool, huh? All right, so the, the third thing, or the fourth thing I'm gonna put in, mm, pepperoncini. Now, the grocery store, that's this, golden pepperoncini. They did not have the ones that were already sliced up, which for this recipe, I tend to buy because I'm lazy. They only had the whole ones, so we had to chop them up. And there is about a tablespoon of the juice. Yum, because I like this a little, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the skillet back over. We'll bring the skillet back over. Our oil is heated, look at that. And in the pot goes our onion our red bell pepper. Oh, did you hear the psh? red bell pepper? And our yellow bell pepper. And our pepperoncini. There we go. I will go ahead and give this just a spritz, a, a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper, just because you know that I like to cook in layers. Okay, so there you go, see? Oil, onions, red bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, and some pepperoncini. Okay, so all on there. How long do I roast my garlic in the oven? An hour, Katrina. 400 degrees, an hour. You eat them straight from the jar. I love that. Now, here's another cheater. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Had a wife and couldn't keep her. Um, here's the other cheater. Is... Um, you really should use sirloin. I mean, that's what everybody says. But have you ever had these? It's called steak um. And it's my cheater for these sandwiches. And so it's sliced steaks. They're frozen. It's in the frozen food section. Um, and, and they come in, so it's still frozen because you're supposed to cook them from frozen. So I'm going to open up the package so you can see what it looks like. A little bit of frostbite is what I see, but that's okay. All right, so you see what they look like? I know it doesn't look very appetizing. They're separated by pieces of paper so you can flip them off. Uh, not flip them, you know, take them off. They're made in Enid. Pepperoncini are made in Enid. Wait, let me see. Product of Greece. Well, this is from Greece, but maybe they have some other ones there. <clears throat> anyway, so you see it's a, it's a slice of beef. And what you're supposed to do, well, this is two. It's, it's pretty thin. You put them in the oven, I mean, in the skillet, and you brown them for a few seconds on each time, and it's lovely. It's wonderful. Okay? Okay, can you hear the sizzle? Do you see the sizzle? Yum. I'm using my spurtle, my bamboo spurtle, to stir, in case you're wondering. Remember, there are no sponsorships. So it's not like I make any money from any of the stuff I do. Okay, so we're just gonna keep cooking that. 
because <coughs> we want our onions and peppers soft. All right, back to the steak um. Yum. So, normally that's what you would do. You would cook it on both sides. Because I'm doing Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, I'm gonna make them a little different. I'm gonna take the separation off, right? Between, take the paper out. Please make sure you take the paper out. Um, leave this one, because I might need that. Uh, and I'm gonna stack them up. Now, one package is, let's see, it says nine ounces. And um, if you haven't tried these, give them a try. I mean, it makes it easier. All right, so, so look at the stack. That's what we would have. I don't know. Maybe it's because we're all fat pigs here at the Pertle House, but we're gonna, we're gonna make two packages of them, okay? Philomena, good morning, glad you're joining us. Where are you from? All right, and so here's this one, again, taking off paper, and I'm gonna put this in a second stack. Taking off. Anyway, these are quite lovely, and again, yes. Sirloin steak would be probably a better choice, um, but for me, more work. All right, so I have my two stacks, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut them in thin strips, and then I'm gonna throw them in the skillet to cook with, um, except I have to, they're frozen, so I have to use some body weight here. All right, so see, I'm gonna cook them like this. So they're almost the same size as the peppers and the onions that we sliced up. Cause you know me, perfect bite. So I like everything about the same size. You don't have to. Um, if you're making these for sandwiches, you can leave them whole, it's fine. Um, your your uh, about of laziness may be different than my laziness, right? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stick that in a bowl and then I'm gonna do the second one. Let me get this other bowl. So each of these bowls holds about two cups. And this bowl is filled, so that one uh, filled it up. And so I'm gonna cut this one. Um, there we go. Does anybody doing anything even be, be from the deli? Yes, Katrina, that's true. You could get um, uh, roast beef from the deli and do it that way. Uh, we use roast beef from the deli on Thursday to make those roast beef roll-ups. They were so good that Philip and Jessica made me go back to the store and get more roast beef and more cheese. And um, we're making them again. I think that's dinner tomorrow night. Last night we had hamburgers. Tonight is a whole different ball of wax. Okay, there we go. Now, let me put these up here. So I have two packages of steak um. Oh, I wish you could be here. Do you see the steam? Yum, 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 yum. All right, so I'm going to dump these in. Oh, look at that. In and in. Now I know it looks like a lot of meat, but this is Texas. We like our meat, right? All right, so I'm gonna give this a toss. Almost looks like we needed a bigger boat, doesn't it? A bigger boat, I say. All right, so I'm gonna put that in there. Oh, put that over there. What do we forget, do you think? What should we have added to that? You know me, somebody asked the question and then it had to happen. Roasted garlic. You know how I love my roasted garlic. So I'm gonna take out two, set it on my um, little cutting board. I'm gonna shove this this way so you can see. You can chop it. You see it right there on the bottom of your screen? You can chop it, yes, garlic, of course, but what I like to do so nobody gets a big bite, unless it was just me, is take the, the flat edge of your knife, just like you were gonna do garlic if you were gonna pop it, and just smash down, and then kind of move it to the side. And so you see, then it's all flattened. You can take your knife and run it one way and then another way, and then there you go. Look at this. And so you've got a nice little garlic paste. The dogs always want something, right? Okay, in it goes. All right, the only other thing I'm gonna add to this, cause you know, where's the seasoning? It does smell divine. And, and I'm gonna, again, be a little lazy today with the seasoning, 
Um, Cause you know, normally I open the spice cabinet and dump. Today, I'm gonna go a little old school, all right? And so today, my seasoning is just gonna be Lowry seasoned salt. How much, you say? Well, you know, some of you are on salt-restricted diets, so maybe not very much. Some of you don't care. Um, I'd say probably a teaspoon. Maybe a tablespoon if you wanna go all out. But again, it depends. Remember, I did two packages of the steak um. You may not need this much food, quite frankly. Maybe you do half a package. And so then, if you do a half a package and little bits of onions and peppers, then just do a couple of good sized shakes. All right, back on the stove we go. Now, the peppers and the onions are softened, so all we're waiting for is for the meat to defrost, right? Because it was frozen. Frozen steak um. That's what we use if you've never done this, sliced steaks. Again, is it, oh my gosh, great. It's good, and it's a, it's a good lazy. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, the other thing that we were gonna, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I promise it's not COVID. Oh, I, I went to drink this one because it had coffee in it, but no. All right, the other thing we're gonna need is some cheese. There's a big debate, obviously, about whether you use provolone, American, or whiz. So I'm gonna ask the question, when you're making a cheesesteak, are you a provolone, American, or whiz girl? And by whiz, I mean cheese whiz, because that's kind of a big deal. I didn't have cheese whiz. We're using provolone, but I'm interested to find out what is your favorite, all right? This is just um, a store-bought, sto it's already sliced, which again, makes it easier for me. Uh, I gotta pull the plastic off. Well, there we go. There we go, look at that. Just sliced provolone cheese to PLO East. I don't know what that means. Provolone, provolone, provolone. Oh, see, I thought there would be a whole lot of whizzes. Because that's kind of a thing with uh, whiz wit. That's what you say if you want whiz. Oh, Blanc is a whiz. There we go. I knew there had to be at least one. All right. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do with our provolone. I have made a huge mess in my kitchen. I'm just saying. Okay. Here's what we're going to do with our provolone. I'm going to bring the skillet back. I think I'm done with this. I'm going to bring the skillet back. Cheese whiz. Oh, my God. No, it is not a southern thing, Judy. It is not. Oh, Terry, all of the above. <laughs> Does it really matter? Oh, look at this. Look how lovely. Can you see how lovely? Oh my goodness. All the meat is yummy. Mmm, yes. The smell is to die for, all right? If it was a Southern thing, I'd be putting Worcestershire in there, but I'm not. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna spread this all out in the pan so there's like an even layer, okay? And then I'm gonna take my sliced provolone, or provolone, however you wanna say it, and I'm gonna go all the way around the pan, I'm gonna push it this way so you can see, all the way around the pan with my provolone cheese. This is gonna make it very, very cheesy. Ha ha ha, cheesy. All right, so there we go, cover it. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna turn the stove off, because this is still hot, and put the lid on just to let the provolone Milk. While that's going on, you have not cooked unless you've made a mess. Well, I've cooked because I made a huge mess. The next thing we're gonna need is our buns. So I've just got a baking sheet with some parchment paper. And here's the deal. I could have gone to the store and got hoagie buns or, you know, big lovely buns. But I had these left over. These are Cheesecake Factory uh, brown bread and they're called dinner rolls. They will work fine, thank you very much. So this is what they look like, all right? Um, I still think you need a little toasted bun, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. Bread knife. I'm gonna cut down, let's pray I don't cut my hand. Um, I'm gonna cut down almost all the way, but not all the way, just so I can open it up, all right? So it's still connected, and um, I'm gonna flip it down, okay? Um, I'm gonna, you know, my, uh, my 
Oreos are still in the oven. So at 350, so that's what I'm gonna put these in. All right, if you're doing big hoagies, you can do those. They look like spuds. They do kind of look like potatoes. They're very good if you've never had them. Um, all right, and then I, I have four, so that's what we're doing. Toasted garlic bread, yum, yum. All right, so open, and there we go. All right, so I put them flat side down, and I'm just gonna stick these in the oven just for a bit. I just wanna warm them up, and they'll get a little toasty. Okay. I think it's time we checked the Oreo. I'm gonna get the small one out. Is the small one with them? Let me see. No, oh no. It's still very gooey. We may not get to taste it. That would be a shame if we don't get to taste it. Cause then we can't finish the recipe. Um, I'm gonna turn the, I know this is awful, but I turned the oven up so bad. All right, so just to make that dessert even worse, just in case it doesn't finish. So remember, our Oreo brookie started with a layer of chocolate chip cookie dough, store-bought from the tube, pressed down. Then in a bowl, we mixed eight ounces of cream cheese and a half cup of powdered sugar, and we put that on the next layer. The next layer was our Oreos, and I didn't crush them up, I just laid them in a, in a row on top of that, because today is National Oreo Day. Then on top of that, we mixed up a boxed brownie mix and poured that on top. Into the oven, 350 degrees, and it does take about 20, 25 minutes, and so it is not, it's not done. Like, I thought the little one would be done quicker because it's smaller, but it's still gooey. When that comes out, because it's not gooey enough, right? It's not chocolatey enough. I'm gonna take store-bought, whatever brand you want, right? Store-bought milk chocolate frosting. You can either frost the top after it cools or you can let it cool a little bit, stick this puppy in the microwave, give it a stir and it'll, it'll just pour. I'm so lazy, right? Because it's so much easier just to pour the frosting on and let it cool than it is to try to do all that. So that's what I'm gonna do, because I don't think we're gonna have our stuff in time. All right, so while that's going on, I thought I would show you my shower. We're gonna run a little bit long just because I'm waiting for, um, I know, why my shower? Well, because we've been talking about um, damage that we had from the, the cold, oh, it's dark, going down a dark highway. No, dark hallway. Okay, so we're going into the bathroom, just so you can see. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna open the shower door and we'll go in. All right, so I gotta flip it, hold on. No, not that button, not that button. Flip, there we go. All right, so this is the inside of my shower. So my husband, brute that he is, broke through the tiles, broke through this board to get back here. And so then there was a leak up there and he had to cut that pipe and he MacGyvered it with some uh, automotive radiator hose. And so that's keeping it so that it doesn't leak. And then we had to cap off here because there was leaks all over here. And so there you go. That is the shower. Isn't that fun? Fun shower. Zippy. Some of you have wondered about my bathroom Polish pottery. I thought I'd just give you a shot. Okay, so I have this little tray and my little toothbrush holder, my little Q-tips. This is a ring holder and it's got rings, but it also has my night guard on it. That's probably gross, too much to share. Uh, my little soap dispenser. Then I have actual soap in this one, see? Then I have another little tray with stuff that I use. And then I have this little heart-shaped bowl for other stuff. Because obviously, I have a whole lot of stuff going on, right? Okay, several of you have asked to see the stuff, so there you go. All right, so that's the bathroom. Zippity-doo-dah. Um, and then we have something similar going on in the laundry room. Come on, dogs. Okay. Philip was actually asleep in there because he worked all night. He worked all night in the ICU. So... We also have the laundry room that's going on. And then the garage door broke. 
Then the freezer went out. So it's kind of like, oh my gosh, around here. All right, so we're back. We're gonna go ahead and put together our sandwiches. I'm not certain that we're gonna get to taste our brownie. That makes me very sad, boo hoo. All right, so let me get out the buns. <clears throat> Here's our buns. Get your buns ready. And um, here's the dinner plate. Look, Bluebell. I was gonna put the brookie on the little one. Look how pretty that is. Yes, so not only do I have the plate. Look, see, I have the dinner plate. I have the salad plate. I have this big bowl. And then I have the little bowl. I have everything that matches. I always think you need, you know, like, I buy one of each pattern so that everybody's got different stuff. Good morning, Janet. Good to see you. So I'm gonna use the big one. Here's our buns. I'm gonna put two, because really that's a sandwich, don't you think? Okay, and then shoving that that way. I'm gonna go get our stuff. I'm getting our stuff. Okay, took the lid off. So it just sat there without the heat on, just the lid, so that our cheese would melt on top of that. Isn't that pretty? All right, I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I'm gonna use some tongs. And we're gonna put this, oh, look at that. Yum, yum, yum. So I'm gonna grab cheese, peppers, and onions. Okay, that doesn't hurt my feelings. Look at that, that does not hurt my feelings at all. And I'm gonna put that on the bun. Oof. On the bun you go. Good Lord. Mm. Goodness, look at that cheese. It's stretchy. I gotta break it, hold on. Come up here. Break off right there. Come on. It doesn't wanna break. Break, break, there we go. All right, and then we'll put this on here. Look at that, you see the peppers and the meat and the cheese, mmm, yum. Get, get back on there. Okay, see, 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 see? If you wanted to, you certainly could take a spoon and get some of the juice out if you wanted and put a little juice on there. That might make some yum people on the bread. Mm -mm -mm. All right, are we ready? Let me put this over here. Are we ready? Yes. That cheese bowl is everything, I know, right? Mm. All right, <clears throat> let me shove this one back on here. Okay, look at this. Oh, I'm gonna shove, I'm shoving it in. There we go. Ta and da, look how pretty. Onions, red bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, steak um, Lowry seasoned salt, and provolone cheese. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Here we go, ready, big bite. Mmm. Mmm. Cheese. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. So lovely. Mmm. And really, mmm. Not difficult at all. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. Yum. You need that. Mmm. I'm going to go ahead and take out the small one. Just so you can see it. It's not done yet, but then you can see So you can see on the small one, you see how it's almost done? It is almost done, but when you stick the toothpick in, it's still got a little chocolatey on it. And so I wanna let it cook just a little bit longer. Um, and then I gotta put the chocolate frosting on top. So what I will do is you know that I usually do a separate post and I say today's recipes and I put a picture of the recipes. I take a picture of them. So I'm gonna let the Oreo brookie cook just a little bit longer till the brownie's done. I'll frost it, I'll take a piece out, and I'll take a picture so you can see. You know what's gonna taste good? It's chocolate chip cookie, it's cream cheese and powdered sugar, it's Oreo cookies, it's brownies, and it's chocolate frosting. How could this not be? Oh my gosh. Hey, Linda Sue from Illinois. So anyway, this will go back in the oven. Uh, I hope that you give these a try. These cheesesteak sandwiches, so easy. Because really, you're, you, you chopped an onion and two bell peppers and some meat, and that was it. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. 
I know that it's Saturday and normally we do an adult beverage, but I didn't really want to do an adult beverage right after the um, vaccine. I don't know. I just didn't want to chance it. So we'll, kept it, we'll catch up next Saturday. So I hope you guys had a great day. From my kitchen to your kitchen, may every meal be quick, easy, and yummy. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have an awesome rest of the weekend. Bye, everybody.